Hi there guys, it's uh, Charlie here at Sterling Power. Uh, I'm going to do a video on troubleshooting uh, the battery to battery charger, both the 1230 and the 1260. I shall be demonstrating with a BB1260, um, but it's, uh, it's the same for the BB1230, so it's just for illustrative purposes. Um, okay. Okay, if I hold this now, can you turn the power supply on? Don't worry, I can cut all this. <clears throat> so what I've got in front of me here is a BB1260 on the test bench. And I have a voltmeter here. And what I'm going to do is tell you what the input voltages are. That so hopefully you, you can see the voltmeter there. What what I need uh, from you guys is to have approximately 14 volts or so on the input. Here we've got about 13.7. Anything above about 13.2 shall activate the unit. And then on the output, you've got 14.2 volts. So what this is demonstrating is that the battery to battery charger is boosting. And at the moment, we're currently doing 33 amps. Okay, now this particular setup is absolutely fine for anything older than Euro 5 vehicles, where your alternator will be above 13 and a half volts and below about 15 volts. However, from late Euro 5, Euro 6 vehicles and younger, what you'll find is that your input voltage here may not be as high as 14 volts, it may be way down to about 12 volts when you start up. So what you need to do is get an ignition feed. All this is, is it's connected to your ignition and it provides a live nominal 12 volts when your ignition is on and then when your ignition is turned on, off, it goes to zero volts. And this gets connected into the very bottom connector here. Okay, now what we can demonstrate, I, I fasten that in, it really ought to be screwed in, but I'm just leaving it loose anyway for demonstration purposes. I'll just tighten it up just to keep it in there. If we now drop the input voltage at the power supply to, let's say, 12 volts, which would replicate, which would replicate the alternator not activating, i.e. With, with Euro 5 or Euro 6, We've now got so 11.8 volts on the input, and we've got 14.3 volts on the output. So if we don't include this ignition feed cable, what you'll find is that this output voltage will just drop to nominal leisure battery voltage, nominal output voltage, not carry on boosting. So this signal here from the ignition feed has provided it with the necessary signal in order to maintain operation. It's basically telling the battery to battery charger that the ignition is on, therefore the engine's about to start or is it already running and therefore to fire up and to begin charging. Okay, so this cable here that I'm pointing out, the, uh, the, the ignition feed cable here is a prerequisite if you're installing it on any commercial vehicle, any recreational vehicle, camp, camper van, whatever, from about 2015-16 onwards. If you don't install this, the input voltage coming in here will be too low to naturally activate the battery to battery charger. So it will be 15-20 minutes of driving before this unit will activate unless you install one of these things. Um, and even when installing this you may have to wait up to about 60 seconds for the battery to battery charger to finally kick in and get going. Okay, uh, so that's the, the major, um, major feature of these battery to battery chargers that we've had to change within the last 12 months. Uh, because this whole region around here where you've got this little bridge connection, historically you'd put the ignition feed into the middle terminal and you'd have the loop wire going from the third terminal to the first terminal but we've had to modify that 
uh, just to enable the battery to battery charger to operate at much lower input voltages and it will actually work down to about 10 volts now the battery to battery charger however it is a warning that if you leave your ignition on and your engine is not running you may end up with a flat starter battery well you will end up with a flat starter battery uh, because like I say this unit will drag the starter battery down to 10 volts uh, if the engine's not running okay now if you are having any other issues that are not related to the voltages that I've just shown you down here I'd always recommend to press and hold both of these buttons down simultaneously for over 30 seconds now I'll demonstrate it now for you hold on and all this will do is do a factory reset for you so any modifications that you have made to the battery to battery charger throughout the duration of you having it can be overridden and it will be reset back to default so you may have accidentally just pressed and hold both of the buttons down for five seconds and you've just done something that you don't recognize i.e in this case you forced it into float mode and that has resulted in the charger only putting out 13 and a half volts but what you really uh, wanted to do was change the battery chemistry so you've made the wrong decision there so if you don't know what these leds are doing simply do a factory reset by pressing and hold both buttons down for 30 seconds or more let's say 35 seconds so i'll demonstrate that now and you'll notice the little halo that appears around the uh, setup and select buttons when I hold it. It's very faint in this room because the lights are quite bright, but a little halo around the outside of the buttons shall appear, as you can see there, and that denotes one second. So every blue flash is one second. And like I say, it's any time over 30 seconds. So 40 seconds, 50 seconds, 60 seconds, doesn't matter, just at least 30 seconds. So we'll wait for a good length of time here. And then if we let go, you see it alternately flashes here. That tells you that you're sort of halfway there and then press and hold again to confirm. And then you get a row of three uh, green LEDs on each side. Um, and then that has confirmed a factory reset. Okay, so now the unit will reboot in, in default settings so as you can see sealed lead acid is the default battery charging profile um, and it's gone into bulk mode we've still got that low input voltage because we're on a euro 6 vehicle and we're boosting because the right column becomes the output voltmeter all right so they are the main troubleshooting things with this unit it's checking the voltages down here and that you've got your ignition feed in the right place and failing that it's doing a factory reset up here and going from there um, so you've probably come to this video because someone at Sterling has recommended that you come and look at this video and if none of these things work for you then give us a call uh, you may need to send our uh, send your battery to battery charger in to us okay all right thank you